0.8 Newton's method. Okay, so here's how one of these problems work. Suppose that a car dealer offers to sell you a car for $18,000 or for payments of $375 per month for five years. So you'd like to know what monthly interest rate the dealer is in effect charging you. Well, to find this answer, you have to solve this equation for zero. It's basically one of your finance equations set equal to zero and you go to solve it. So the 60 represents your 60 monthly payments for five years. And so we got to solve this thing. Well, that's extremely difficult. So what you might consider doing is just graphing it and finding the x-intercepts. <clears throat> well, we can see here we're at 0 to point 0.2. So I think we're going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yep. So we're somewhere before 2, 4, 6. We're somewhere between 0 0.006 and 0 0.008. And we would ask to find the zero between those two numbers, and we get this value right here. All right. So our interest rate would be that. So what the calculator does to find that is it uses something called Newton's method. And what Newton methods does is it relies on linear approximations in your calculator. So we kind of looked at that formula before. All right. And so Newton's method says, OK, you're trying to find and label the value r. That's what we're trying to find, that x-intercept. All right, but we're going to start at x sub 1. Well, what Newton's methods discovered, that if you take the tangent line through that point of x sub 1, f of x sub 1, you create an another x-intercept of the tangent line getting closer and closer to r. So, like I said, start with x sub 1, find the tangent, find this point. Well, because that's a linear line, we can find that value at x sub 2 by looking at the equation of the tangent line. Okay, so here's the concept of finding that value with that tangent line. Here's our linear approximation formula. y minus f of x sub 1 equals f prime of x sub 1. That's going to be your slope of your tangent line times x minus x sub 1 through that point. So basically it's your point slope formula. Okay, that. So if we solve this by putting 0 in for y, because that's what we want our y coordinate to be, we come up with the equation x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 all over f prime of x sub 1. But again, you got to make sure that f prime of x sub 1 doesn't equal 0 because it's in the denominator. Okay? So the process here, what we're going to do, kind of jump ahead a little bit. We're going to repeat this process. We're going to take x sub 2. We're going to go up and hit this point on the curve. Oops right there and then we're going to find another tangent line at that point there is our tangent line and that's going to be x sub 3 equals x sub 2 minus f of x sub 2 over f prime of x sub 2 basically the same equation we had earlier if we were to wrote this out as a as our point slope form and solve it again for x sub 3, we'd get the same thing. So if we jump back here real quick, what we're doing is we're just changing this to the 3 and those to the 2s, and we get that formula. So that gives me my new x sub 3, and I'll repeat the process, hit the point on the curve, draw in my tangent line until I get to x sub 4, or r, as close to that r value as possible. Okay, so in general, if the nth approximation is x sub n and f prime of x sub n never is equal to zero, then the next approximation is given by x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus f of x sub n over f prime of x sub n. So we can repeat this process over and over and over again. And this is exactly what most of our graphing calculators will do to get to zeros. And of course, 
this is how you get those rounding errors by what happens by doing this over and over again. All right, so if we do this an infinite number of times, we're going to conclude that, A, our x sub n is going to eventually equal r, our x-intercept or zero, whatever we're looking for. All right, so starting with x sub 1 is equal to 2, find a third approximation, x sub 3, to the root of the equation x cubed minus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. All right, so x sub 1, that's your first approximation. We just have to do x sub 2 and x sub 3. All right, so here's our formula. We have to declare what our f of x is. That's this equation right here. f of x is x cubed minus 2x minus 5. Well, then we're going to have to take the derivative of that equation. So f prime is going to be 3x squared minus 2. All right, so with n being 1, our first one coming up here, then x sub 1 plus 1, this will be the second approximation, x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 over f prime of x sub 1. Let's put in the values for x sub 1. We said it's going to start at 2. So 2 minus f of 2 over f prime of 2. Well, we're going to calculate the numbers here. 2 minus, we have 2 to the third minus 2 times 2 minus 5 over 3 times 2 squared minus 2. Calculator tells me that this comes out to be 2.1. When we're all said and done. All right, so we're going to repeat this again. When n is equal to 2, now that we have our second approximation, x sub 2 plus 1, that's going to be x sub 3. This is where we're trying to get to. x sub 2, or 2.1, minus f of x sub 2 over f prime of x sub 2. We substitute in the values, and we crunch the numbers. Whoa, these are going to be pretty ugly. I'm going to let the calculator do all that. So that's 2.1 minus 0 0.061 over 11.23, or approximately 2.09456821. There's your third approximation. All right. So one thing that we probably want to do is figure out how we can get our calculator to do this. Make it a lot easier on us. All right, so here's what our calculator can do for us. <clears throat> if you take the original function and your f prime of function, put that into y sub 2, come back here, come on. We can take on the home screen 2.1 minus alpha, shortcut to your y equals alpha trace, y1, 2.1 parentheses on the top, y2 over 2.1 on the bottom, store it for x. And that gives us this value. And if you wanted to re keep repeating this process, x minus y sub 1 of x over x sub 2 of x and store it for a, we get an another decimal value, and as you can see, we're getting much more refined in our answer. Now we're good out to one, two, three, four decimal places that are the same. And we keep repeating this process until all my decimals are the same in my home screen. Okay, so I do this again. Now it's A minus Y1 of A over Y2 of A. I store that in B. That comes out to be my fifth approximation. Holy cow, now we're all completely, we're, we're right on cue. Okay, and when we get to class, we'll, I'll do a calculator example of how you can double check and how far you actually have to go until this shows up as a zero. All right, and we can keep doing this until, like I said, all your decimals are the same. So. If the directions say they want it to be until six decimal places, an approximation to six decimal places, that means the first six decimal places have to be the same. If they want seven to seven, if they want eight to eight, if they want nine to nine. All right. Okay, so let's use Newton's method to find the sixth root of two correct to eight decimal places. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a function. So set this equal to x. 
and get it equal to 0. So I need to take the sixth power of both sides and subtract over the 2. This is my original f of x function. And then I need to take the derivative of that is 6 x to the fifth power. So again, I want to use my calculator here. So this is going to be stored into y1. This is going to be stored into y2. So with n equal to 1, all right, sixth root of 2, the closest answer I can find that's an integer would be the sixth root of 1. So I'm going to let x sub 1 start out as 1. All right, so x sub 1 is 1 minus f of 1 over f prime of 1. Well, we can crunch these numbers. That's pretty short and sweet because there's only 1s there. And that comes out to be 1.1666 repeating. That's my second one. All right, that's enough of that. It's just going to get worse. So we're going to go to the calculator. So we're going to store y1, y2, as we said, original function, first derivative. Go to the home screen. Now you're going to notice I got away from the a, b's, and c's is because I wanted this to be much, much easier. So all I have to do is cut and paste. So in my calculator, I started with 1 minus y1 over y sub 2 of 1. Store it for x. There's that answer. And now I'm going to click up, grab this statement, hit enter, and change the 1 to an x so it's using this previous answer right here. And then I get this decimal answer. And now this decimal answer is stored in for x. Well, we're nowhere near eight decimal places because my second decimal place isn't even the same. So I up arrow, cut and paste this one down here, and I don't even have to make any changes because now this value right here, the 1.12644367878, getting too ahead of myself, is stored in this x, which is being put in right here, and now it gives me this value. So now I'm good to two decimal places. So i got to keep repeating this process. So it's a good idea to keep track of what x approximation you're on. So right now, we're on the fourth approximation, and we got to keep going because I'm only good to two decimal places. So I repeat, here's the fifth approximation, one, two, two, four, we're good to four decimal places. Cut and paste, repeat, one, two, two, four, six, two, zero, wait a minute, to the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> one more to go. Have to do this one more time, cut, paste, enter, and now we're good out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, heck, we're good to nine. But again, we're not sure about 9 because we don't have that 10th decimal place to see if that was possibly rounded. If you'd want to double check it, you'd want to do this one more time to see if it's the same. But we're good. It took 7 approximations to get this to be correct to 8 decimal places. And again, that's because we started at the 1. Sound good? So this is how, so this is how the calculator does the same thing. We give the calculator a starting number and we have it keep working it out until it gets to the zero. Again, I'll point this out in class with the calculator. So if we go to the home screen, ask for the sixth root of two, one, two, two, four, six, two, zero, four, eight. There's your answer. And that's how the calculator finds this value. It stores this and it say y1 in its memory. It does its derivative. It takes the, the first smallest number less than that basic, and then we crunch through it. All right, fine, correct to six decimal places. The root of the equation cosine x equals x. Root being, okay, where is it an x-intercept? So we gotta set this equal to zero to be my original function, and then we take its derivative. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine of x, derivative of minus x minus 1. All right, well, if you were to graph this, make sure you put your calculator in radian mode. So this is, in blue, y1. And when in radian mode, it counts by pi over 2. So this is approximately 1.57.
So that looks like it's somewhere in between. So I'm going to go half of 1.5.75. So that will be our x sub 1. So now I'm just going to take 0.75, store it for x, because I don't want to rewrite anything in my calculator. So I type that in, and I'm not kidding, in my calculator, I went up until I went back to these commands and pasted it in, because it's going to use these new functions and this new value, and there's my first, or I should say my second approximation, because there's my first. All right, definitely got to go again. So cut and paste, third approximation, we're good to one, two, three decimal places. Cut and paste, fourth approximation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're good out to eight. We're good right to there. So we're good. So there is my final answer, 0.739085. All right, example four, use Newton's method to approximate correct to six decimal places again, the indicated root of this function in the interval between one and two. So we have to double check, do we actually have an x-intercept between here? So here's my f of x function. Here's my f prime. That's the first derivative of this function. And so what I did is I took f of one, check the left bound, negative 2, plugged in f of 2, gave me 14. So from negative y's to a positive y, there must be a crossing of the x-axis between 1 and 2. So we'll start with our x sub 1 at 1. All right? Okay, so again, enter this into y1, enter this into y2. On my calculator, again, start with 1 stored in for x. Cut and paste. We'll go back up from our previous examples. Copy this down, second approximation, 1.25. Okay, we've got to go to six decimal places. Cut and paste, third approximation, 1.218. Not even close, got to go again. Fourth approximation, one, two, one, seven, nope, not the same. Cut and paste, fifth approximation, two, one, seven, five, six, two, there we are. We are the same. So for six decimal places, 1.217562. If I did this one more time after the fifth approximation, I can see the sixth approximation is the exact same decimal. So this is as close as we're going to get right here. All right. So I'll see you in class, and we'll do calculator examples of this and show you exactly how the calculator does this for us when we find our zeros.